Hi, this is Susan from Susan B Cards. Today I'm going to show you how to make a variety of mixed media backgrounds. All the supplies will be linked below in the description and also on my blog at susanbcards.blogspot.com. For my first background, I took glitter cardstock and Ranger alcohol ink in shades of blue. And I put down some isopropyl alcohol to make the alcohol ink move around. It's pretty simple. My next example is um, really inspired from Tim Holtz's Eroded Metallic, but at the time it was COVID and um, I wasn't able to get the paints. So I tried to make up something myself. So I started with a piece of um, mixed media heavy stock paper and I missed it. And I used uh, tarnished brass distress spray stain. It's a metallic, and I just spray my paper, and then I use the water to move it around. I want to pretty much cover this um, with a metallic. Now the reason um, I like using this is because it stays reactive with water. Even after it's dry, it'll keep moving. So you'll see um, in the next few steps what I end up doing with this. So I'm just going to move it around. I have a couple spots here that are a little bit thick. So that's pretty good, and I'm going to um, let that keep moving, and then I'm going to dry it with a heat tool. So my paper's pretty dry, and now I'm going to take Distress Resist Spray. Now this is um, kind of a gluey type substance, um, but wherever you spray it, it will act as a resist to trap whatever is underneath it. So um, you know that if I should wet this right now, um, the the brass spray stain would start to move again and it would mix with some of the colors potentially. But by doing speckles of this on the paper, it'll trap some of that brass underneath. I'm just gonna do a couple of squirts here and there. So it's a pretty sticky stuff substance. I don't know, maybe you could see, yeah, you can see some of it in the light, the white, spots um, and that's going to dry like that so I'm just doing a, a quick um, spray rather than misting the whole thing but this has to dry completely and I'm not going to use a heat tool I'm just going to let it dry the resist spray has uh, dried so maybe the, yeah I think you can see it in the light a little bit or the reflection of where it's dry. So I like to start with um, this one, which is speckled egg. Just a little bit of a blue color. So I wet the paper, shook this up. So it looks like that. I'm gonna put a couple colors down. Here's peeled paint. Now I'm gonna put a couple of the regular spray stain. This one is um, faded jeans. Just put a little bit of that in the corner. It's pretty dark, but you'll see it's all gonna to start to mix up together. This one is peacock feathers. I don't think I've ever used that one before, so I'm not sure about that. Maybe it might be a little bit too green. Okay, so then what I do is I start to spray this and all the colors are going to kind of mingle together and the um, the resist spray, of course, is going to keep those areas the color they originally were. 
I like to hold it upright as I dry it so you can see that you get those streaks where it looks like something was almost poured over the top of this um, brass. This is not completely dry, but it's a little bit dried and um, you can start to see the eroded effect on there. I'm gonna take a little bit of this peeled paint, put it in a couple corners. Hopefully you can see that. I know I have to have it in an angle so that it continues to drip, but you can see how um, it's kind of getting a very eroded type look. But this isn't done because I'm gonna use some brown as well, and that'll help subdue the whole thing because I don't want it to be bright. Okay, so um, it's still wet. I haven't used a heat tool again on it, but I'm gonna add this. Um, vintage photo. Now you can see putting that over the colors I already have. And again, use some water. I think with the addition of this dark color, you can start to see um, the brass underneath peeking through. A little bit up there. You can even add maybe black onto this, but I wouldn't do too much of it. But a little bit of black would also look good, I think. So this is Distressed Mica Stain in Fallen Acorn. See how that mica looks. It looks pretty nice. Um, I think I'm just going to add a small amount more of this fallen acorn. Now this is never going to come out the same way twice. Um, but the key to this is letting some of the layers dry in between, then moving the new color around not hosing the whole thing down so that it's it's sopping wet, but just enough so that everything starts to move with gravity. So you could even turn it the other way if you wanna get some, so you start seeing lines there too. So that's kind of interesting. I'm gonna let this dry. Okay, I found the black soot. I'm gonna try just a little spray because you can see as things dry, it really lightens up. I put a little bit of rusty hinge right there just to kind of see what that looks like and it looks pretty good, but I don't wanna to put too much red on it. So. Wish I hadn't put so much of that on there. Here's a rusty hinge. It's just the regular spray stain. Now in that time I didn't put any more water on it because I don't want it to um, keep mixing, so. Now that looks pretty cool. I think I'm gonna just leave this like this, let it dry and see how, how it looks. For my last background, I just took some distressed watercolor paper and completely wet it. And then I go in and take some dark paints and just put it all over. I was hoping to find a bigger paintbrush, but I can't. So I think I'm just gonna use this gigantic one, see how this one works. Yeah, that's not bad. So I just, I put down the paint And this is gonna be done in layers. So I'm gonna put down the first layer and it's not gonna seem that dark.
because it's the first layer. I think that's the only way to get a really good background um, by just putting down layers of color. Just need a little bit more water. The paintbrush is so big. So. My dog is barking. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just let, uh, dry this a little bit with a heat tool. Um, and I'm sure you don't wanna hear that, so I'll be right back. It's pretty dry. And now I'm gonna put down more paint. Want some dark green in there. So I'm gonna let that dry, or I'm gonna use the heat tool again. So I'll be back. So now I'm going to cut some of um, the dies from these two sets. They're from the vault, and this one is called World Traveler, and this one is um, Watch Gears. I cut these two, this one from the metallic, this one from that inked paper that I have. This one I have to push out a little pieces out to throw that away. But I want to show you what I would do in the next step with um, this. Um, I, I, you know, I cut it to make a card and I just find it way too shiny. I learned this from Tim Holtz, actually, from one of his, his lives. So this is just regular black acrylic paint. And I use that quite a bit. I just buy the cheap stuff from Michaels for this or, you know, whatever big box copy store you have. And I put a little bit down and then I, whoops, I um, just use paper towel and I get it into some of the crevices like that. Should have used, normally I would um, mount that. I would cut it twice, once from regular cardstock because as you just saw that, but this is just for sample. Um, you just push that into the crevices to age it and it takes away some of the shine. You can let it sit for a few seconds before you wipe it away. And even if it dries completely, you can usually scrape it off. So that's how I age my metallic cardstock. So for the world, um, I die cut it from this aged paper that I made. Now, you could just use it this way. And there's also um, cutout pieces to layer on here. You could do that in a different color. You can die cut the pieces from green. And you could put um, blue behind it because you can die cut just the circle behind it. And then you can put blue and it would look like water and then land. But in this case, I want it to look like the globe is aged, so I die cut it from that paper. But um, I did want it to have some copper in it as well. So this is Sizzix Creamy Acrylic Paint, 
and this is in rose gold. So I'm just going to put a little bit, you can put it on a palette or whatever. It's pretty um, fluid, so you just want to put a little bit on. It's not as thick as this black acrylic paint. And then I just went in. So this is, you know, I just went in and color this with a rose gold. Now this is doing it a little bit backwards because normally you would probably take some copper and then age it with um, the green. But in this case, since I already had the paper and I don't have any um, paint that's similar to this to, a um, to age it like a patina, I'm doing it opposite. So I'm just covering some of that. You want to kind of leave some of the um, areas without the paint because uh, you want it to look a little bit aged. So in some of these spots like here, I'm just using a dry brush, just putting a little bit on there. Now this paint dries really fast. So just gonna put a little bit on there. And that's pretty much, if you use a dry brush, you'll get some of those streaky marks, which look good. Just a little bit of patina on there, mostly copper. And then you can put that on, you know, whatever background you want. If you wanted to put it on um, a blue background, let's say, it would really stand out now. And then if you put a piece of paper behind it, you could also pop that up with foam in the back too. So I just wanted to show you how I age the two pieces. Now I want to show you three of the cards that I made using um, the background techniques that I showed today. The first one is with the, um, the watch, which was called the Watch Gears. I keep forgetting the name of it. So with this set, and I combined it with the World Traveler globe. So you can see that I die cut just the body of the watch, and then I layered it with the globe. Now, instead of using paper behind it, I put some moss. This is fake moss that I bought from Michaels, and it's actually in pretty ugly colors. You can see that here. And it, it was really inexpensive. What I do is I just take this, I take a handful of this in ugly colors, and I put it in a shoebox and using spray, this Distress Spray, this is one of my favorite colors to use, peeled paint. And I use, um, I put on a latex glove, put it in the box, I spray it, flip it around, spray it some more in a couple of different greens. I used um, Rustic Wilderness with that too. You know, you could use some oxides. This is gonna give a much darker effect. You can see in the background, like this lighter stuff is probably like an oxide. So mixing the two is kind of nice because you get a color variation. Um, and then I just let that dry for a while and then I push it into my card. I just glued, you know, about three fourths of the way down this is an older uh, die set that's not available anymore from Tim Holtz. And I did this, I, I've done this a couple times on my Instagram where I've die cut flowers and then I've made it look like those pots with a moss in them. So that's kind of cool. So that's the, where I got the idea for this. All these flowers, um, I have a whole box. I don't know if I'll be able to get it in here. And these are scraps. What I do is um, if I ink something up and I don't like it, I throw it in there or, you know, I'll ink quite a few things at one time just so that I have them on hand and I can die cut from. So this is all scraps and I use the um, vault field. I can't remember what it's called. And then these, I, I'll link everything, but these are flowers from another set of um, Tim Holtz's and the same with these small leaves and these plants. So I'd like to just die cut them and put them behind. I think it adds something to the um, to the card. And then this is a tiny text. I have a whole bunch of sentiments I just threw in a cup 
and I just pull them out and I try to find something that works because I don't enjoy looking for sentiments. So this is the watercolor background. This one is the glitter background. And then um, this is a Christmas sentiment, but I thought it was kind of nice for even now. I die cut that also from the inked glitter paper. This is just regular Yupo paper. You know, I, I said that dye for the uh, Earth Globe um, has a separate dye for the pieces of land that you can layer on top. Um, so this is just that gold metallic cardstock that I put black acrylic ink on. And then I took some of the Yupo scraps that I had with alcohol ink, and they were green, so I put that on. And then behind it, Oh, behind it is just blue Yupo paper. So, again, like something like this where I took Yupo paper and I just played around with the alcohol inks and didn't really use it for anything. Same with this. You can die cut these and use them for something else or a background. And uh, that's just silver metallic paper. I think that's everything. And then for this one... It is that watch with the gears again. Um, this is that eroded background that I showed. Another sentiment. These are the numbers from the set. It comes with two different sets of numbers. Some I use for the watch face. I know that the little ones fit on here nicely, but I just kind of like the whimsical look of the big ones. And then I cut this from that gold metallic cardstock and then just put the black acrylic ink on it. The gears are just regular metallic. I didn't age them. Um, I think this is, I think this is ink that I put on just regular white card stuff. But I la I layered it quite a few times. And I'm trying to see if I could see that. Yes, you can see that I die cut the um, watch itself from metallic, and then I put it on top of just a regular um, craft card stock, glue that together. And then to give it more dimension, I had scrap cardboard that I also keep like this. This is what I cut. This came in one of my orders. I don't know, maybe with paper or something like that. And they shipped it to me and I just keep that cardboard. And then I die cut that and that die, die cut perfectly well. And, um, I was able to pop up my card. I cut the circle with, um, one of the dies that was in the set and I used acetate. So you can just get acetate, you know, from a lot of plastic containers, food containers. Uh, I just had a scrap of it. I use a lot of acetate in my cards. So I just, I cut the circle and put everything on top. It's not a shaker card, but you can certainly put little shaker bits in there if you wanted to make a shaker card. I just wanted it to show, look like one of those see-through watches. And then I die cut the butterflies the butterflies are in this set, which is um, Evolve Boutique. So the butterflies were in there and I used small ones and I just die cut it from more of that eroded paper because I wanted to, to look like time flies. So I had the numbers falling. It looks like they're falling out of the watch and the butterflies are flying away. But I just love the way that looks and it, it almost looks like um, a real timepiece, doesn't it? So that was nice. So I still have um, a couple sets I haven't used at all from Vault 2. So I'm gonna go and, and try to think of some new things for those. I still have these two. Oh, and uh, this one. These three to still use. But I thought this was a nice combination of two. Once I started, you know, working, making one thing, I think I made this one first. And uh, just to get an idea of, you know, how everything works. And then I had ideas that just started coming. So I hope that was um, helpful to you and you got some mixed media ideas. Um, I will put more pictures and information on my blog. Things will be linked, of course, in the description if, it is, if you're wondering about what I used. And they'll also be linked to my blog, which is susanbcards.blogspot.com. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.